Hey everybody, this is Russ from Metro Game Core. Today we're going to be reviewing the new X-Real Air 2 glasses. Now these were just announced today, but I've had them for a couple weeks now and I've been doing a bunch of testing. This also is not my first time using glasses like this. This company was previously called N-Real and I did a whole video about those previous glasses as well. They've now rebranded to become X-Real. Now, in addition to having these new numbers on the glasses, there are a couple new features. Number one is that we have different color options. So this is the red color option right here. Same price and same features, but you know, with this nicer red color. In addition, we now have a pro model. So this one has an additional feature, which we'll go over here in this review. It is actually pretty neat. Now, in addition to having these new colorways in the pro model, we do have some extra features. Number one, 120 Hertz refresh rate on all of these models, which is gonna be really great when you're plugging that directly into the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally. In addition, we also have the fact that they're more lightweight. So these are just a little bit lighter than before and they're more balanced. And then also the screen is brighter. And probably the most important thing for me at least is the fact that the audio has been significantly improved. That was one of my main complaints about the previous model. So we got a lot to talk about here in this video, just seeing whether or not these glasses are gonna be a good fit for you and whether or not they justify the $400 or $450 price point, depending on the model that you get. And so without any further delay, let's go ahead and get these off and start the review. Okay, as we get started here, just a couple disclaimers. Number one, these were sent to me free for review, but no money was exchanged in any sort of way. And of course, all opinions are my own and they're not seeing this ahead of time. And what I wanna do here in the beginning is just really talk about what these glasses are and whether or not they would even be a good fit for you and your own use case. So let's go ahead and unbox all three of these models to get an idea of what we're working with. Now, the contents of all these glasses are gonna be the same and they do have these additional prescription lenses. So if you wear glasses, you would have to get these changed to your prescription and then add them to the glasses themselves. Themselves. In addition, it comes with a couple extra nose pads in case yours wear out over time. These seem to be the exact same size across the ones that are already on the glasses and these two extra ones here. And the glasses themselves will come in a hard shell case like this. And this one's unique in that it doesn't have a zipper around it like the previous model. This one just has a really strong hinge to hold it into place. The cable itself is braided and it's pretty high quality and also about four feet in length altogether. And I think that's an ideal length to be able to plug it into a handheld gaming device or maybe your phone or a tablet. Now, taking a look at the glasses, one of the major changes I've seen between the old one and the new is the fact that the front cover actually has this reflective glasses kind of texture to it. On the previous model, this was completely matte across the board. Now, the glasses themselves look very similar to the previous model. They have that Wayfarer kind of design. But the major difference with the cover is that we have this light guard on the bottom. And we'll talk about that more when we actually start to test the glasses. But other than that, the design seems very similar to the previous glasses they released. We have these down-firing speakers here that are supposed to go directly directly into your ears. And the connection cable is gonna to connect to the left side, as you can see. Now on the right side, we do have a little bit of IO. On the leftmost side, we have a small microphone hole. And then we also have a button, which will function as either a sleep or an additional feature we'll talk about later with the Pro. And then finally, we have a brightness rocker that will go up and down. You can also use this to adjust the volume depending on the device that you're using it with. Also on the inside, we have a small sensor that'll know whether or not you actually have the glasses on or off your body. And the way this works is they have two micro OLED projectors here within the glasses. And so this will project a full 1080p resolution, which looks pretty impressive. And this is what the glasses will look like from the front when you don't have the cover on. I think it still looks pretty sharp. Now, one unique thing about the X-Real glasses is that you can adjust the angle. And you adjust these by moving the arms of the glasses. It's going to take a little bit of force to move them, but don't worry, you're not going to break them. And we have three settings altogether. One thing of note is that I worried that the front was going to be really smudgy, but it turns out it wasn't too bad. It still would definitely pick up fingerprints, but it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Anyway, as you can imagine, the unboxing experience is going to be identical for the other models, although the red one is a lot more red. It's got a red carrying case, a red cable, and then also the entire frame is made out of red as well. And I think it looks pretty good, but it is a little bit bold for my own tastes. Now the covering is still black, just like the other one. And so when you put this on, it actually mutes some of that red coloring. So if you do wanna have red glasses, but not quite as bold, you can kind of mute that a little bit by putting on these covers. And then finally, we have the Pro model, which honestly, from a hardware perspective, is absolutely the same as the other two models, just in a black color. I think it's a couple grams heavier, but honestly, there's no way you're gonna notice that. And so here's a look at what the glass look like both of the cover off and the cover on and honestly when you're looking at them dead on like this it doesn't look that abnormal 
And I also find them to be lightweight in the sense that I've never felt like I was getting a headache or they were too heavy, even after prolonged use. Now the big distinction between these and regular glasses are going to be when you actually look at it from a side profile. Here you can see because of those rather large nose pads, the glasses themselves will stick out pretty far from your face. And this is deliberate because if you had it too close, you wouldn't be able to see the full image on the screen. The way they describe it is that it's the equivalent of looking at a 130 inch screen. I'm not sure how they come up with those numbers, but I will say that yeah, it'll fill up your full field of view when you're looking straight ahead. So the glasses themselves are not super natural looking, but I will say that with the cover, they look even more unnatural. And a lot of that has to do with the light blocking guard that they have here on the bottom of the covers. Now, the nice thing about the covers is that they will black out the light and it will make things a lot easier to see, especially in a brightly lit condition. However, that's where that new feature from the Air 2 Pro actually comes into play. If you press the side button, it'll actually toggle through what they're calling electrochromic dimming. And there's three levels here. There's 0% like the other glasses. And then there's a 35% effect, which will basically allow you to still see things, but it'll be much darker. And then there's a 100% effect, which is very similar to actually having the covers on. In fact, it's kind of magical how dark it'll actually get with that 100% setting. To me, it's to the point where I don't feel like I need to have the covers on to be able to see things more clearly. Now, at this point, the main advantage of the covers is going to be that bottom light guard. But I also found this is kind of a double-edged sword. Number one, I not a huge fan of the look of that bottom guard. For me, it makes the glasses look a little bit more awkward, like to the point where you absolutely know this is a tech product. Without them, you can kind of get away with actually having them on your head. I wouldn't want to walk around like a mall with them, but all the same, I like it a lot better without the covers than with them. And to be honest, from a practical standpoint, the bottom covers do not block a lot of the light that really bothers me when I'm trying to use this in a brightly lit environment. In fact, most of the light that bothers me comes from the sides and not the bottom at all. So if anything, if I really wanted to try to block out the light and have a more immersive experience, that's where I would want to have the light actually being blocked, not on the bottom, but on the sides. So when it comes down to it, I definitely see the value of getting the pro glasses in the fact that you can dim down that screen, but then you don't have to use the covers either. It'll make the glasses both lighter but then also a little bit more natural looking. And of course, it'll be up to you whether or not you think that that $50 distinction is going to be worth it. But for me, if I was going to be buying these glasses, I think it definitely would. Now, when it came to my own testing and use case, I definitely played it mostly with gaming, and I mostly prefer to use it with handheld gaming systems, you know, things like the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck. And like I mentioned before, these glasses now support a 120 hertz refresh, and both the Ally and the Steam Deck have an external monitor option to be able to do 1080p and 120 hertz. Now, obviously, you can't do 100 120 hertz with AAA games on these machines, but you know, you can play lightweight things like Hades, and it's actually a lot of fun to play it in 120 hertz. And I definitely saw the distinction in smoothness between 60 hertz and 120, so I do think that is a pretty significant upgrade. Now, unfortunately, I don't really have a camera setup that'll show you how good the screen will actually look when you're looking into them. So in that regard, you may have to just kind of trust me in the fact that yes, it looks really good. If anything, it reminds me a lot of taking a tablet and then putting it very close to your face where you basically have that as your full field of view. It's like that, but with glasses so that you don't have to hold something up at the same time. And honestly, there's a few advantages of playing games like this. Number one is the fact that you don't have to tilt your head down to look at the screen, and so you're not going to get any sort of neck wear over time. And these glasses are also brighter than the previous ones. They go up to a 500 nits of brightness. The previous ones were up to 400 nits, so we're looking at a 25% increase in brightness, and you can definitely tell the difference between the two. The other thing I like about it is you don't have to hold the handheld up to actually meet your eyes. Instead, you can kind of just rest it on your lap. And so in that regard, it becomes a very comfortable experience where you can look wherever you would like, but then also you can hold the device itself wherever you would like as well. And of course, in addition to playing games, you can use it for media consumption. So you can plug it into your phone or your tablet, depending on whether or not you have the connection. And I found that to be a very nice experience, just like how it was on the other glasses. So, you know, laying around in the bed or maybe on a couch watching a TV or a movie without disturbing someone else, but having a really big screen and nice audio. Yeah, that's a pretty good experience. Now I want to talk about the old glasses and some of the differences between the two in case you have some of those older ones and you're thinking about upgrading and whether or not it's going to be worth it. Number one, the case is different between the two. The older one is larger and also had a zipper. However, there was one thing I liked about the older one is that it had a flap where you could put your cable and then the glasses on top. 
I don't think it's a totally necessary thing, but I did like the fact that I could distinguish between the two little compartments. The other major difference between the two are the front covers. Like I mentioned before, the old one on the left here was completely matte, which did look a little bit weird when you're walking around the house with this basically blocked out. Now you could argue that having the reflective part of the glasses like this is a little bit weird as well because it's not actually doing anything, but all the same, it does actually make it a little bit more natural when you have it on your face. Now in terms of design, everything else looks just about the same. If you handed me one of these glasses without the case or the cover on top of it, I would have a really hard time distinguishing between the two. But there are some slight differences. For example, with the cover on, the old glasses were 93 grams, and the new ones are a little bit lighter. They are 86 grams altogether. And of course, with the covers off, it gets even lighter. So the new ones are 76 grams with the covers off, compared to the older ones, which were 82 grams without the covers. Now for me, the biggest distinction between the two is the improved audio quality. Like I mentioned, this was the biggest complaint I had about the original glasses, in that they felt really muffled, and then also I had to turn the volume a lot to be able to hear dialogue. And my complaint was that I had to turn it up so much that other people could hear me listening to things just so I could hear dialogue myself. And so often I would use them with Bluetooth earbuds just because that made it a little bit better of an experience. But it was also kind of a pain in the butt to have to make sure that my earphones were also charged. It was just another layer of things that I had to manage. Thankfully with the new ones, the audio is way improved. Let me go ahead and give you some testing right here. We're gonna start with the old versions first. We're playing these at 100% volume. Now let's take a listen to the new ones. So for me, that's a night and day difference when it comes to clarity and just kind of that more cinematic feel. And so I really like the sound on the new ones. It's definitely to the point where I don't feel like I need any sort of Bluetooth earphones, which is a great move. Now, when it comes to compatibility, when plugging into a game system, you need something that has display port out. This means you can plug that USB-C cable directly in and it'll provide both the video and the audio through that cable. So this means that most of those modern handheld PCs are gonna work fine. You know, things like the Steam Deck as well as the ROG Ally. And many Android devices if they have video out through USB-C are going to work as well. You know, something like the Odin or the Odin 2. Now, when it comes to video out on a phone or a tablet, it's really going to depend on what you have. If you're using an Android-based device and it has video out, then obviously it's going to work. And also, if you have one of the more modern iPads, those with the USB-C out, that's also going to work fine. Now, when it comes to iPhone, if you have the new hotness, you know, the iPhone 15 or whatever that has the USB-C plug, yes, that'll work just fine. That's what I have here. And yeah, it was a plug and play experience with a single cable. However, if you're still using an iPhone or a tablet that has a lightning cable, you'll have to use this adapter. And we'll also have to use a new accessory from Xreal that's called the Beam. I think this has been out for a while, but I just got it with these glasses, so it's new to me. And this thing retails for $120. So it's not super cheap, but it does have some pretty neat functionality. And there's two major things that it does. Number one, it increases the compatibility with certain systems. Essentially, you're not going to need a DisplayPort input. It'll take an HDMI input instead. The Beam itself is actually pretty nice. It reminds me a lot of like an iPod Classic. We have a little navigation wheel on the front as well as a confirm button. And then we have a mode button on the left side and a volume button on the right. And then up top on the right side, it's kind of hard to see right here, but that's a power button as well. Underneath, we have our connections. One is going to be the video in and then the video out going to the glasses. And it also has a little lamp your thing if that is something that's important to you. Overall, I think it's a pretty nice solution in the fact that it's not super heavy. It's actually the exact same weight as the Mio Mini Plus. Not only that, it's pocketable and the battery life's pretty good. It lasts about three and a half hours altogether. Now, $120 is pretty steep for an accessory. So let's go over what this will actually get you. Number one, like I mentioned, it'll allow you to use an HDMI input. So for example, here with my Xbox Series S, I have a cable that's going from HDMI to USB-C. I've plugged that in as my video in and then it's going directly to the glasses. And so this will allow me to play home console systems, you know, the Xbox or the PlayStation, while plugging it into the Xreal Beam. However, there are a couple things worth noting. Number one is that the frame rate is going to cap out at 72 frames per second, so generally you're going to be playing at 60 frames per second this way. In addition, this process does introduce a little bit of latency, not to the point where I actually noticed it, but it is something that they mentioned in their marketing materials. So if you are playing something competitively where you want a high frame rate or you want to have very low latency, this may not be a very 
a great fit. And it'll be a similar process with one of those older iPhones. You'll use the lightning to HDMI adapter, then the HDMI thing into the X real beam. And then from there, you can watch your movies and whatnot. That's a lot of accessories to be able to do that. So I'm not really sure it's going to be worth it for you. Now, in addition to a home console with HDMI, it'll also work directly with a Nintendo Switch via USB-C. However, one thing to make note of is when you plug it in like this, it actually makes the Nintendo Switch think that it's docked. And so as a result, the controls that are actually on the Switch itself won't actually work at all. And that's because the device thinks it's docked and that does disable those controls. So instead, if you want to play Nintendo Switch games, you have to remove those Joy-Cons, you know, set the tablet itself down and then play with the controls that way. Or of course, you could use a Bluetooth controller if that's going to be a better fit for you. So that's one of the two advantages of the Xreal Beam is that it will improve compatibility with things that may not work out of the box. Now, the other advantage of the Xreal Beam is actually more significant to me and that it has three different display modes, which I found to be pretty great. The first one is called the body anchor. And what this will do is it'll suspend your image wherever you actually want it to be and it won't move around. So as you're moving your head around, the image itself will stay where it is. And that's very similar to when you're using a virtual reality thing, you know, like you're watching a movie and it's like a fake couch or whatever. It's similar to that in the sense that you can move your head around and the image itself is going to stay stationary. And I think that's really great. In particular, I found this to be a really great fit with more fast paced or first person shooter games. As you can imagine, if it's just moving around with your eyes, as you start to like kind of move around, it's just kind of naturally as you're playing one of those more high end games, I found that it gives me a little bit of motion sickness. With the body anchor thing, it doesn't happen. Instead, I can see exactly where it is, and then I can kind of like move my head and eyes around as I naturally will do, and it doesn't really mess me up at all. And so I really do like that. But of course, bear in mind that it is going to have a couple disadvantages, like these 72 frames per second, and there will be that minimum latency, which again, I didn't notice, but you may. Now, the second video mode is called Smooth Follow, and I know it's really hard because I'm just describing it. I can't actually show it, but this one's pretty neat as well. This one's kind of a hybrid between the other two. What this will do is it'll stay relatively stationary, but then as you move your head, it'll move with it, but it's slowly, like it'll go like at a little bit of a delay. And so what this means is if you're playing somewhere where you're moving around a lot, say for example, if you're in a car and you're watching a movie, it won't be as jarring. Instead, it'll stay kind of stable and it'll move along with the motion. And so as a result, if you do have issues with motion sickness, like I do, this can kind of be a nice solution as well. And finally, the third one is called side view. This is basically a picture in picture function. So instead of it taking up the whole screen, you can have it just take up one of the four corners. And so now you can kind of interact with others or maybe, you know, watch something else or do something else while you're still watching something in one corner. I didn't really use this one that much just because I don't really like walking around with these glasses on, but I don't know, maybe that's something you would want to do. So if you're comfortable with walking around like this and you want to have just a little bit thing like here on the left or whatever, this is how you would have it set up and you could totally do that. Personally, it's just a little bit awkward for me to walk around like this, but it might suit you. And so that is a neat option as well. Now, another component of the X-Real Beam that's not in the regular glasses is the fact that it has a larger screen. It'll blow things up. Instead of having the 130 inch like display that you have, it's 330 instead. Now, I personally found that that goes beyond what I can actually see, like the glasses are actually being cut off at the corners. But what you can do is when you have it in stationary mode, you can kind of just move your head around and see those if you need to. So I can see where that would be a good advantage in some use cases, but not in others. Honestly, I you can actually change it in the Xreal Beam settings where you can just move it down to 120 inches instead. And so it's that normal viewing angle. And that's honestly what I did for most of the games that I was playing. So I think it's really going to be up to you whether or not you think that the Xreal Beam is going to be worth that additional $120. The way I see it, if I just had my regular Xreal glasses, then this might be something I would consider. But if I'm paying $400 for new glasses, this is something that I think that I would not get initially and then just use them as they are. And then over time, I would decide whether or not I want to spend that additional $120 to get those additional features. As it stands right now, that's kind of how I feel about it. Yes, if I had the old ones only and I wanted to upgrade, instead of getting the glasses, I would just get this instead. But if you're going to be buying the new glasses from scratch, then I don't know, maybe wait and see and see if maybe the glasses on their own are going to be worth it. Now, as we start wrapping up, you're probably wondering whether or not I think that the Xreal Air 2 glasses are going to be worth 
worth it just at that price point. $400 for the regular ones, $450 for the pros. And I have to say that off the bat, that's a lot of money just to be able to watch something. You know, obviously, if you're going to buy a TV, it's going to be around that same price as well. And so this is kind of a TV you can put in your pocket. But I'm not really sure if that's going to be a use case that will directly correlate to what you want to do. For me, I kind of think of them as an accessory to the other electronics I already have. And so I'm not really sure for me personally, it's going to be worth that upgraded price. And there are some features of the Air 2 that are pretty neat. Number one is that refresh rate. 120 hertz, if you play games at that refresh rate, is going to be pretty great. In addition, it's brighter now, 25% more. And then also it's a little bit lighter. So they've got the technology a little bit better as well. Number one, I think that the best factor to it is the improved audio in the sense that I no longer feel like I need Bluetooth earphones. So that's pretty great too. So the way I see it, if you are now just jumping into the whole glasses thing, you want to pick up a pair of glasses, you're not sure which ones to get, then yeah, I think that the Xreal Air 2s are probably the best out there right now. And that's even considering all the other brands and everything that I've tested. At $400, I think that if I was in the budget to get one of these, these are the ones I would get but I would probably get the $450 Pro model instead. I really like the fact that they will darken so you don't have to use those covers if you don't want. This will make it more lightweight and also a little bit more natural feeling as well. So that's what I would do. I would get the $450 Pro model. Now, of course, whether or not you're in the market for glasses is gonna be up to you. Maybe you're just curious about them in the first place. And I will say that over the past year, we've seen a big increase in the features from the Air 1s to the Air 2s. And that leads me to think that maybe the Air 3s are gonna be coming out next year. So it's one of those things like with anything else when it comes to technology, the longer you wait, the better it might be. And so if you're hankering for them glasses right now, then yeah, these might be the best ones. But if you're patient and want to see how they will go in the future, then I think that waiting is going to be in your best interest. Anyway, that's about all I have to say about the Xreal Air 2 glasses. I think they are probably some of the best that are out there right now. It's really going to come down to whether or not you're in the market to buy them in the first place. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Have you bought any of these glasses before and how was that experience? And are you looking to upgrade to the Xreal Air 2? As always, thank you for watching and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.